Okay, we're back. I pro as promised, I'm going to show you guys. <laughs> I'm going to show you guys the finished product of scones here. Oh, my light is too close. Hold on. I didn't do a light check before I started. Sorry. Excuse me. That's better. Um, we're going to I'm going to show you guys the finished product of the scones. They are ready to come out of the oven right now. So now my tripod's in the way. Everything's in the way. It's a tight kitchen. Look at this. <laughs> Can you see those? Hold on, let me turn the camera around. Sorry. Look at that. That is how beautiful, even though you guys know that I had kind of screwed them up uh, with them being, you know, soft. Um, but yeah, I mean, they just turned out beautiful. Love them. I can't remove them from the pan until they're ready to, uh, until they've cooled off. But yes, they are perfectly perfect. Yummy, yummy. All right. So now, let me move my camera just a little bit closer here to me so we get a full view. I can see that some of you are here to learn how to make marinara as well, I'm suspecting. <laughs> so I'm going to show you my... Uh, it's actually not my recipe. I, this recipe was taught to me, and I love this recipe. It is so good, and it is super, super easy to do. So what I have going on right now in my stock pot is I have about two tablespoons of olive oil um, in my stock pot. Let me grab a spoon here. To this, I am going to add three cloves of fresh garlic. Now you notice that they are whole cloves of garlic. These are not chopped up, they're not minced up or anything like that. There is a reason for that. <laughs> this is just the three cloves and they're gonna go right down into my pan. I'm gonna turn my heat up just a little bit and I'm gonna mix those with the olive oil and I'm gonna cook those for just a few minutes. I actually want them to get a little bit brown, so a little bit toasted. So you might call this toasted garlic marinara sauce. I don't know. No, but you're going to toast your garlic. So I have three big, these are actually really big. You can see in my spoon there how big they are. Um, I have three large cloves of garlic in there with a table, uh, two tablespoons of olive oil. And I'm going to let those toast up in there. The other things that we're going to use, we're going to use two jars, two jars of crushed tomatoes, so you see that, sweet and pure from Italy. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna use two jars of this. This is one of my favorite brands. I actually love this brand. I love that it's in a glass jar and not a can, which means that I get to avoid the BPA that is possibly in a can. Um, not possibly, but is in a can, so I can avoid that toxin. And um, and I get the the... The, the product, the base for my sauce very easily. So I'm gonna start my garlic. So that's what's gonna go in there. It already smells fantastic, by the way, in case you're wondering, sorry, but it does. So I've got two jars of these. Then I have a jar of, in a glass jar again, not in a can, but in a glass jar, organic tomato paste. So you're gonna need one jar of that. This is a tiny little jar. There's only seven ounces in here. So, tiny little jar. The two tablespoons of organic olive oil, of course. This is my favorite brand. It's inexpensive and yummy, and I trust it. Salt and pepper. And then for your fresh herbs, you're gonna use, I told you this is a simple recipe, so you could add other things to it if you were so inclined, but a, a two tablespoons of fresh basil, chopped, coarsely chopped, chopped, and two tablespoons of parsley. Now, I want you to be conscious that if you have somebody in your house that is sensitive, and I do, he can hear me actually, this is probably the first time he's realizing that his marinara sauce that he loves has basil in it, but it does. Sorry, honey. Uh, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> that's so funny. Anyway, he should just stay away from the kitchen when I'm cooking because he loves everything that I make. He just doesn't want to know what's in it. So, but if you have somebody who's sensitive to these herbs, then I highly recommend getting a nice, uh, small chop on them. And so that they don't get a huge bite of basil or a huge bite of garlic or a huge bite of parsley or something like that. So just be really conscious about that. Be thoughtful and mindful as you're preparing your food. It makes a huge difference in its outcome. 
So I don't know if you guys can hear, you probably can't. That's all the ingredients, by the way, so easy. My garlic is sizzling away in here. Sizzling, sizzling. And it's got a little bit of a browning on it, which is what I want. I'm gonna go let it go just a little bit further. Hey, it's good to see you. Thanks for being here. Did you see the scones? You didn't see the scones, you love garlic. Yeah, hi. Yeah, I love garlic too. Here's the scones that I made earlier and scoped those. You can go catch the replay. Look at those babies. Those are grain-free scones right there. Yeah, cool, right? Grain-free scones, chocolate cranberry scones. It's an earlier scope. You can go catch my replay if you're so inclined. Yay! Lisa just made her first kombucha. Lisa, I'm going to make mine this week, my first one. <laughs> I know, it's so good, right? I'm so excited for you. I can't wait to hear how it turns out. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Still waiting for my return email, Lisa, about what you want to do about your free consult. You may not need me. Maybe I need to be consulted by you. <laughs> okay, so my garlic is nice and toasted, and I'm going to just leave that right in this pan. I'm not going to take this out of the pan. I am not... Um, <laughs> I am not, uh, I am not going to just flavor my garlic or season my pan. So I'm actually, uh, leaving my garlic right down in the pan. So to that, I'm going to turn it down just a little bit because I do not want to scorch this part. To that, I'm going to add, man, I knew I had the wrong spoon out. It felt wrong and it was wrong. I needed this spoon. And the reason I need this spoon is because I have this little bitty jar and this little bitty jar that big fat spoon doesn't fit in and so this is a double ended spoon big end little end <laughs> and that gets down in my jar so yeah cool right okay so um, down into this I am gonna put my tomato paste hey Dawn it's good to see you on here this evening so my tomato paste goes right in Sizzling, sizzling. Too hot. I always do that. If you guys, I, every time I make this, I scope it, and every single time my pan is too hot, which is hilarious. I'm not kidding you. I always think it's perfect, like I have it on the perfect temperature, and it's not, so. It's good to see you this evening. I know. Yeah, I, if, I swear to you, if you've seen this scope, you've seen me do that before, and it's so funny when I do it. And it pops everywhere and makes this huge mess. And I just cleaned my kitchen today. Dang it. It's okay. <laughs> I don't care. It cleans right back up. Actually, it didn't make much of a mess. I caught it in time today. All right. So this whole thing is going to go down here. This is a super important step. You want to heat this tomato paste before you put your tomatoes in because it's going to get it a little bit thick. And it's going to meld with that roasted garlic. It's going to meld with the roasted garlic and make this amazing, amazing sauce. Now I'm going to go back to my big end and back on my heat. Can you see that in there? So you do not want to scorch this tomato paste, but you do want it in there to meld with the olive oil and the garlic. This is going to give it this really rich roasted taste and this flavor profile that is actually pretty darn amazing. So this is an important step. Don't just pour everything in there all together. This gives a chance for your tomato paste to melt in with your garlic. So there you go. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> Do you guys ever, I mean, I am so notorious for cooking things too hot, right? Got it. Um, I am so notorious for cooking things too hot. I do it all the time. I think it's because I feel like I'm always in a hurry, even when I'm cooking, and I love to cook, obviously, because that's what I do for a living. I've chosen to cook for a living. You burn eggs. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of good at that, too. I have to be so careful. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so I, I, I think I'm just going too fast, and I want it to go fast, and so I turn up the heat, and so... Man, I have some enamel pans that you cannot, if you do that, you are to all the time, right? Okay, good. I'm not the only one. So you guys were like, oh, I do that too. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Thank God for that. Okay. All right. So here's the reason why you make your own marinara sauce. Yes, that's true. 
and I had turned down my heat, but I just didn't give it enough time. And if I was not scoping, I would have given enough time, but I scope this every time I make it because there are so many people that are still even healthy people that are buying their spaghetti sauce and, or their pasta sauce or however you eat sauce like this, marinara sauce, um, and they're still buying in a jar. And I'm trying to teach people that you do not have to do that because it's super easy and you can make a big batch of it and actually have it. Uh, you can freeze it. It freezes after it's cooled. It freezes perfectly perfect. And so you can have a couple of jars ready um, without all the processed stuff and sugars and all that kind of junk in it. So. All right, so that is ready. You'll know it's ready because it kind of starts to stick together. See how it's sticking together right there? That's how you know that it's ready. It starts to stick together. It smells so good. I'm so sorry that you can't smell this as always. I am still on a campaign to get smelloscopes. Yeah, homemade marinara is yummo. And I always like to learn from other people and how they make it because it's, it's everybody's a little bit different. And it's I love that part of it. So, sorry, wiping off that end of the spoon. Okay, so now that the heat is down and that's ready, we are ready to go in with our tomatoes. Now then, see how I'm pouring into the spoon there? See how I have the spoon against it and I'm pouring in? This is to keep it from plopping down into my sauce and splattering everywhere because I don't want to do that again. <laughs> Although I did just do that a little bit. That just helps control the pour a little bit and keeps it from splattering all over you. You notice I still have my garlic in there. I still have not removed my garlic. If you're doing your own tomatoes, which is totally fine because these are just crushed tomatoes. I'm just trying to make it simple for you. If you want to do it this way, you can. If you want to crush your own or puree your own tomatoes in a food processor, that's absolutely fine. I would just add a little bit of water because if you don't, you're going to have a really thick. <laughs> yeah, so just pouring into your spoon. Is that what you're talking about? Maybe not. I don't know. So, yes. So that just gets stirred together. So easy. But yes, so just make sure you add a little water. So I know it's so good so that you do not have, um, you do not have really super thick spaghetti sauce. You can also, hey Natalie, it's good to see you. Um, you can still do this. Um, and when it's done, if it's still too thick for you, which it might be, we actually, this is the marinara. These are the scones. I'll show you the scones. Hold on. Everybody hang out. Here's the scones that I made. This is in an earlier scope. <laughs> hey, Natalie, it's good to see you. These are the scones that I made earlier. So good. They're actually going to be ready to come off the cookie sheet here pretty quick. They're grainless, actually. They're not just scones. They're grainless scones with chocolate and cranberry, dark chocolate and cranberry. And that you can go watch the replay if you want. It's on, it's still on there, of course, because I just made them like 30 minutes ago. So, of course, it's still there. <laughs> totally delicious, right? So, I'm just kind of getting some of my chores out of the way because I have a very busy weekend coming up. And so I wanted to get some of my chores for the week out of the way. And marinara, we just used the last of our marinara. So I wanted to, um, I wanted to be sure and have some. So if I needed a quick dinner um, this week while I have company, if I needed a quick dinner, I knew that I could just pull out the marinara. So, <laughs> yeah, no, they're amazing, Don. You would love them. The grainless scones are so easy to make and you, they're hard to screw up. Like I screwed up when I made them because they were too moist, but they actually, too wet, uh, but they actually turned out beautiful. I'm happy with how they turned out. So, um, so yes, so now we have all of those ingredients in here. If it's still too thick when you're ready to serve it, and sometimes it gets thicker as it cools, like in the refrigerator or in the freezer, you can add a little bit of water and get it to the consistency that you want it to be in. There's no problem in doing that. I do not add water here um, because I, it, it tends to make it, a, I don't know what consistency, consistency it's going to be after it's been refrigerated. So I like to wait to add the water until I'm ready to prep it. So this is two tablespoons of fresh parsley and two tablespoons of fresh basil, coarsely chopped. Those are going to go right in there. I have spaghetti sauce on my hand right here. Do you see that? <laughs> I still call it spaghetti sauce because I, yeah, anyway, <laughs> this is just a salt and pepper. This is actually a, a pink Alea uh, Hawaiian salt that's in here mixed with pepper, just fresh black pepper. And I'm just going to do a pretty fat pinch of that in there. Maybe just two fat pinches in there. The Alea salt actually has some uh, fresh, or has some minerals in it, so. 
and that's why I like to use it. It's actually mixed with volcanic clay. It's salt mixed with volcanic clay, and it has a lot of really good purifiers for the body. So, done. No, I don't add any more olive oil, actually. I've added all the olive oil I could, but you could do that. I may have missed some comments there. I apologize. So, there it is, done. I let it simmer here for, you know, not boil, but simmer here for another, I don't know, 20 minutes or so. I put the lid on it and let it simmer there, and it's done. It smells awesome, right? I know. Dang. Uh, so recap ingredients. There was a uh, three cloves, large cloves of garlic, and they're whole. I did not mince them. They were crushed, but they were whole. So I beat them with my knife, but they were whole. Um, it is one small jar of organic tomato paste. It is two jars of diced tomatoes. And I, it is easy. It's super, super stinking easy, Lisa. I'm telling you, and it tastes so much better than anything you're going to get out of a, a jar that's already made. You're going to be so happy with it. Your whole family is. And you've controlled the ingredients. So I talk about this a lot at Go To Kitchens. I talk about controlling your own ingredients so you know what's in your food. That makes, that makes things like this so much better. Yep, three easy steps. <laughs> Yes, awesome recipe. This recipe is actually on my website, gotokitchens.com. Goto Kitchens is right in the title of the scope if you're wondering how to spell it. Go to Kitchens, G-O, the number two kitchens. And this recipe, if you go in, go to recipes, type in marinara, you'll find it. Yeah, yeah, so cloves in the olive oil. You gotta stir those around, scrumble those up a little bit. Uh, cloves in the olive oil. Then the tomato paste on a low heat, not too high so it doesn't pop all over you like it just did to me. Thank you so much. For, actually, it's the number two, G-O, the number two, kitchens.com. Thank you, though, for putting that in there. Um, but yeah, so you, and you let that heat up so that the uh, tomato paste marries with the garlic flavors because that's where you're going to get a lot of your flavor profiles from. Then the two, uh, two jars of tomatoes and then the fresh herbs and it sits for 15, 20 minutes and you're done. I put it in mason jars like this. This will actually fill up almost one of our uh, whole one of these and about right to here, what I just made. So you're going to get two jars out of that and it's going to cost you less money and you've controlled the ingredients and you're not getting a bunch of added sugars and added salts and all those things. You got it. You got it. Thank you for putting that in there. Yeah, so I just put it in mason jars. It doesn't have to be in that style. You can actually put it in this style. I don't know how much you get out of this. This is like a... I don't know, but yes, you could put it here, <laughs> and uh, and you need some olive oil and your all salt and pepper to taste, and you're ready to go. Of course, you can season it again once it out. Once it's out, you could add some mushrooms to this. I would add the mushrooms not frozen. So if you're if you're making this, um, I would just make the base and then add the uh, mushrooms or red peppers or whatever else that you like in your pasta sauce. Um, I would add those after, um, you know, cook them up and then add the sauce to that like you would a ground beef, like a grass-fed ground beef is awesome for this. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. That's so sweet for you to say. Um, so, <laughs> so yeah, so it just makes it, so yeah, fresh mushrooms are not in this, um, but if I were going to use fresh mushrooms, I would saute them and after when I was ready to use my sauce I would saute my mushrooms then add my sauce and cook those together for a little bit how can you store it so you can store it in your in a mason jar and it needs to be refrigerated because there's no preservatives in it because it's not like the grocery store where you're getting all the preservatives there's a reason that that stuff does not go rancid on the shelf <laughs> and so so yes and so and a lot of it has to do with processing so you have to store it in the refrigerator but you can also freeze this if you freeze this make sure that it's completely cooled before you put it in there because you might get some buildup of some of the heat and the freezing process and it might pop your lid off or crack your jar so just make sure that it's completely cooled when you do that this is a nice these are my favorite uh, these wide mouths these are my favorite they're easy to fill look at how big it is it's easy to fill and I just, I don't know, I just like the look of them. They store easier in the uh, my refrigerator drawers, like I, I refrigerator doors. I can actually get too deep in there. So I just, these are my favorite jars. And you can get a case of these. I think you get eight of these at the grocery store for like 11 bucks. And you can use them over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. So 
<laughs> 99 cent village yeah but i can tell you sometimes they're cheaper if you buy them by the case so yes i uh i usually buy mine by the case and i replace my lids so you can just buy the lids somebody was just asking me about this here's a great example I had some salsa stored in one of these. I made some salsa, which is on my website, my homemade salsa recipe, again, controlling the ingredients. I made some homemade fresh salsa and I put it in this and the rubber part of this absorbed the salsa smell <laughs> and it was really strong. <laughs> my husband was like, what is that smell? I was like, I don't know. I just, maybe I just need to clean the, 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 garbage disposal or something and we were smelling around what does that smell we we knew it smelled like salsa but we couldn't figure it out well this rubber seal had uh, had absorbed all of the salsa smells so unless I was going to use that lid for salsa again then I had to throw it away so I just throw it I just threw it away and you can buy these combo sets um, just the lids so you have nice fresh lids all the time so they don't get rusted and gross um, yeah so you can do that all the time so that's just so you know but mason jars, when you start cooking at home more and you want to prepare, I call it preparing food. If you want to prepare food, mason jars are your best friend. <laughs> I store a lot of my flowers, like my co like the coconut uh, flour that I used. I'm sorry, the almond flour that I used for the scones that I did earlier. Um, I store that in mason jars. I store everything in mason jars because they're easy and I know that they're sealed and, and they look cute. <laughs> Somebody that had never seen my refrigerator. She was visiting me a couple of weeks ago and she opened up my refrigerator and she's like, your refrigerator is so cute. Look at all the mason jars. <laughs> I'm like, really? I don't even think about it anymore. But yeah, I have, them in, I have mason jars in all sizes. So, and sometimes you can pick them up from the, uh, from the dollar store, somebody said, or um, from the thrift shops or something like that. So I missed that comment. I'm sorry. I missed a comment. I hate that because I'm running my mouth. I'm just going to give this a stir. It's bubbling just a little bit, which is fine. It's going to be done if I stay here long enough. <laughs> yeah, so super, super easy and you control your ingredients because your health, you need to cook like your health depends on it because it does. If you're not cooking and chopping and boiling and boiling over and burning eggs and dicing up garlic and you know chopping vegetables and all of that it is hard to be healthy and so get yourself a good set of knives and a nice cutting board and go downtown and get yourself some um i do use special pans that's a great question that's a great great question sherry i do use special pans um so this is i this is a um this is actually a ceramic coated pan um, and I like that because it doesn't have any of the bad acronyms in it. So <laughs> the problem with nonstick is this nonstick. Yeah. Oh yeah, it would be actually, if I was going to do that, I would probably double. If you want to make like a pizza sauce, then I would double up on the, um, on the tomato paste. Yes, but great idea. Love that idea. Actually, I'm doing that. The next time I make this, I'm making pizza sauce. So yes, that's a perfect idea, but you'd want to double up on the paste maybe and in and one jar, double up on the paste and one jar. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is it? Yeah. I was talking about pans. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, that would be amazing. I totally agree. Yummy, yummy, yummy. <laughs> so pans are important. Um, this is a, uh, this is actually a ceramic. You can see the white coating inside. This is ceramic. However, if I ever scratch this, so if I ever use metal or it ever gets scratched in any way whatsoever, I would actually throw it away. It has been a long time, Dawn. I would actually throw it away. I'd use it for something else. I would not use it for, um, for cooking in any longer because it can actually leach. What they, the product that they use to make nonstick pans, so the chemical that they, the chemical agent that they use to take metal and put nonstick, the Teflon on there, um, is actually the problem with nonstick pans. So nonstick pans are not evil. So let's just don't go crazy and throw in all your pans out unless they're nonstick and they're scratched. If they are scratched, then you have a problem in all pans. All pans that are considered non-stick, even ceramic, um, you should be very careful. 
<laughs> yes, yes, many pans have Teflon in it. It's not the Teflon that's dangerous unless it has flake, unless it's flaking or it is scratched. So you just need to be careful. Stainless steel is probably stainless steel and cast iron are your two best options for cooking. I actually find it difficult to cook in stainless and in uh, cast iron. So because I talk to a lot of a lot of people um, that uh, are new at cooking, because I coach a lot of people that this is a brand new adventure for them, I like to introduce them to pans that are easy to cook in. And the ceramic is actually easy to cook in. So um, so I like to introduce people to that as opposed to. Um, as opposed to stainless. So stainless, yeah, or overheated, that's right. Because stainless you can overheat <laughs> and uh, and the food sticks to it and people get frustrated very easily and it's kind of hard to clean if you've not been taught how to clean it. So um, the other thing that I like to use is I like to use, let me show you this pan. This is a pan made by Chantal. You can see it right there. Chantal, I actually work with this company a little bit. They're an amazing company. Um, they make these pans. These are not cheap. Copper is copper is okay. Um, so there's been some concerns lately in the in in the health world about copper pans. Yeah, this is a beauty, right? I have I have a whole set of this. This is this is just the one that was easy to get, but I have a whole set of this. Um, this is an amazing. I actually don't have a stock pot, but I do have um, I do have all the sizes of skillets and other pots. So, but this is um, they actually gave me this pan, Chantal. You can see right there, and. These are not cheap. These are called copper infused or copper infusion. This is actually melted glass. So like an enamel. <laughs> I know, Lisa. <laughs> you should be. I would never buy this pan on my own. They gave it to me. And so I was like, yeah, I'll take that. That's lovely. Uh, <laughs> So, so yes, um, yeah, they do a little bit of sponsoring for me. So yeah, this is a gorgeous pan, I agree. And it's very, very easy to cook in. But this is glass, so this is melted glass. So this is it. my light shining into it. Sorry, blind all of you, blind you. Um, yeah, so this is um, this is enamel in here, and it is it is absolutely fabulous. It's kind of heavy. If you don't like heavy, like to the touch, you know, heavy cookware, this is not for you. But this can go stove. Uh, this can go stove to oven to dishwasher, no problem. And you can use metal. You can use uh, because it's black. People think that it's nonstick, but it's not. <laughs> right? Oh no. <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> but it's not, uh, it is not nonstick at all, but it's easier to cook in than stainless. But a skillet like this is about, I think this particular skillet is like, like $190 or something. Their bigger skillets are almost $300. Um, my whole set that I have is over like $1,200 that they gave me to cook in and to see if I like it. And I do like it. And I, I don't get any money from them. Um, but I, and I do, so I'm not like endorsing them, but if it's, if you're starting to upgrade, it is worth the upgrade to these pans. So <laughs> I know, right? You, well, you have to, you have to watch the previous replay to get the scones recipe. And I wanted to show the finished scones product and then marinara sauce. I know people, I thought that might get people's attention and it did. See, got yours. You're here. <laughs> so yes, so that's the difference. Yeah, love the red too. They make it in red and black, I think. So yes, copper infusion. So co there's a copper disc. So let's be crystal clear. So the whole bottom of this has a copper disc in it. It's very thick. This bottom of this pan is very thick and it makes it heat evenly. Their stainless steel is copper infused, which means the whole pan has, they've melted copper with the, uh, with the stainless so that you get even heating. And that is what this is beautiful for is even heating. So, and I do a lot of stove to oven cooking with my meats because I like them to be tender and juicy. So yes, somebody asked what brand of knives that I use. I just got these actually. I was using a Hinkle set. <clears throat> Sorry, I try to get a reflection. Now I use Shun. I use Shun knives. I just got them. And they did not give me these. Dang. Yeah, Shun. Oh, sorry. Somebody was doing a camera shot. Yeah. This is uh this is an amazing brand. These knives are the sharpest instrument 
uh, that I've ever had in my life. You mean fully clad stainless? Is that what you mean? You mean why the copper infused? If that's what you mean, let me know. I do have an amazing husband. Yes, yes. So copper, when you when you infuse stainless with copper, it actually heats a lot more evenly. Yes, good knives make all the difference in the world. And I have had my same brand of Hinkles for about 10 years, and they're still perfectly fine. In fact, I'm probably, Shun is uh, S-H-U-N, S-H-U-N. I highly recommend them. This is the best knife I've ever had in my life. I have a whole set now, but this is the best knife I've ever had. And knives make all the difference in the world in your kitchen. Yes, they are amazing. Um, but they make all the difference in the world in the kitchen because if you have, it makes the it makes the cutting and slicing and dicing. I see Dr. Christine just popped in. Um, but they make all the slicing and dicing and craziness of cooking so much easier when you have a sharp knife. If you're trying to if you're trying to cut vegetables. These are actually meat knives in our house that we use on our, but if you have a knife like this, <laughs> hello there, if you have a meat knife, yeah, oh my God, yeah, stainless steel is so hard it can chip, yeah, it's for sure, fermented cabbage, yep, that's right, <laughs> I shouldn't, yes, that, Lisa, that's a great Christmas list there, so for sure, that and, and, um, and Chantal and you're in business. So, but if you have this kind of knife and you're trying to cut vegetables, you are not gonna continue cutting vegetables. You're not gonna do that every single day because it makes it difficult. And we are we live in the world of convenience. We like things to be convenient. And so because of that, because we like that, I gotta stir this, excuse me, just a second. So good tip, you might wanna stir it every once in a while. Um, but yeah, so because of that, we don't have a lot of time on our hands. So when you have a nice, <laughs> when you have a nice sharp knife, then you are really making your work a lot easier. Oh yeah, that's another great knife as well. So don't, don't, uh, don't, don't jack around with knives like this. Go buy yourself, if you only can afford one, you know, go buy yourself one good knife and just reserve that for doing your cutting board work. And I promise you, you'll cook more. <laughs> I promise you, because this gets very frustrating after a while. You're like sawing at stuff. If you have knives and you're sawing at it, you need new knives or your knives need to be sharpened. So <laughs> let's just put it that way. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so there you go. Um, yes, one good chef's knife is my is is what I recommend. So everything else you can you can deal with not a great knife, but one good at least eight inch chef knife will make all the difference in the world in your kitchen and you will be much more likely to cook. So yeah, you're welcome. So there you go, marinara. And I can actually touch my scones pan now. So there's the marinara in the pot. There's the grain-free scones that I made earlier. There you go. And I am actually serving these. I'm keeping these aside uh, to serve with the protein for breakfast to some guests I have this week. <clears throat> so I'm super excited about that. I'm gonna turn off this marinara, it is done. And now it's time for me to go cook dinner for my husband. I've been cooking for like the last few hours. So yeah, and so there's the marinara. You can see it, nice, chunky, beautiful, easy. If you want to know how to make the marinara, you can either you can go to my website, go2kitchens.com. There's a how-to video there. It's easy marinara sauce, or you can watch the replay of this scope. So there you go. All right. Awesome. I love that. Thank you, Lisa. I love that you did that. That's so amazing. They are really good. My, I, I'm trying to get my husband to ditch the toast and because uh, he likes toast in the morning, so bread in the morning. So, but he eats a really nice quality of of. Um, yeah, he's probably, I know, right? He's probably like, really? We need to eat. Seriously, stop scoping. Um, but he eats a really good quality of bread in the morning. But I've tried to get him to go grain-free and ditch that. And let, me, let me make him some plain scones that he could actually stick down in the toaster um, and make them light toast. But we haven't gotten to that point yet. Still working on him. Still working. We, he's made some amazing changes. He was very resistant to changes at first, but he's made some amazing changes, and I'm so proud of him. And he feels better for it. We both feel better for all the changes that we've made in our life. So if you want to know more about me, go to kitchens.com. Please go check it out. You can become a VIP for absolutely free and get a free ebook that gives you all of those tips that we just talked about. 
There, you'll get a free ebook, uh, Seven Tips to Fall in Love with Your Kitchen and Yourself if you become a VIP. Um, and it's super easy. I'll show you. Come here. Here, here. There's the website. Yeah, you're welcome. See right up there at the top where it says VIP Access? Click on that, stick your email address in there, confirm your email address, and right to your inbox will come a free book. There's the free ebook cover. How to Fall in Love with Your Kitchen and Yourself. Seven Easy Steps. And I have marinara sauce on my iPad. That's probably never a good thing, or maybe it is. I don't know. And then if you want to read more about me, you can read Meet the Hands. That will tell you about my cancer journey because that's where GoTo Kitchens comes from, is from a cancer, is from a cancer journey. So you can click that too and meet the hands. Yep, and share all my recipes and make comments. There's, I even open it up to comments at the bottom so you guys can comment or ask questions right from there. You can email me from the web page. You can see all there's all kinds of comments there. So, so there you go. Go to kitchens.com. This is what the front of the website looks like if you've not been there. If you're looking at it on a PC, I mean, if you're looking at it on a computer or a desktop, um, you'll see that there's a video usually playing where this is black, but it doesn't do it on a tablet. So yeah, so there's a little video. There's all kinds of videos on this website, all kinds of blog posts. Yeah, and if you haven't seen my sugar blog post yet, um, I just posted it. It's a great, well, I wrote it, and I'm going to be like kind of hoity-toity and say that it's kind of a fun read. I actually even enjoy reading it. How to Break Your Sugar Habits, Sugar Addictions, 10 Healing Steps to Break Up with Sugar. Yep, so there you go. There's a whole little article there. It's actually pretty long for me. I usually don't write long blog posts, but there's 10 steps there. And yeah, so just a little tour of the website. Hopefully you'll go check it out. If you become a VIP, there's going to be a link to a VIP Facebook page. Please, 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 please come join us there <laughs> because we have more conversations uh, there. When I'm not scoping, that's typically where you can find me is in that Facebook VIP page. So yes, and everything that you get from GoToKitchens comes from me. I do not have a team of people that work and do all my website stuff and write all my blog posts and everything. Um, <laughs> oh, me. <laughs> Hey, homie. I, I know you're talking to Dr. Christine, but still, that's funny, Sherry. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but I do all my blog posts, all my email newsletters, all my emails. Everything that you get comes from me, gangsta. <laughs> comes from me so please go check it out it is my heart and soul I do not make a penny from go to kitchens it is all uh, it is all free everything's for free there's not anything to buy if you want to buy something you're out of luck there is nothing to buy over there the only thing I want you to buy is I want you to buy into your own health <laughs> thank you oh thank you I love it yay woohoo thank you all right, yeah, go browse through it, let me know. No, you're the best, Sherry. You are. All right, I'm gonna go make some dinner. Um, it does not include marinara, if you can believe that. I just did that for the week, so I'd have a little few things prepared. This week, this week, my scopes, okay? Thank you. <laughs> no, you are. Uh, this week, my scopes. My hair is pretty funky tonight, man. Okay, anyway, let's get beyond that. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you're welcome. It's good to see you here. Um, yeah, so this week on my scopes, I'm going to be talking about preparing, preparing for, <laughs> it's a love fest, um, preparing for the Thanksgiving holiday. Things that you can do to help de-stress in the kitchen. We're going to be in the kitchen a lot this week again, but we're going to be doing things um, to de-stress um, your holidays and help you prepare some things. And on Tuesday, tomorrow, we're just going to kind of go through the steps. And oh my gosh, Jen, I, I baked and you weren't even there to see it. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I baked. Hello. I made grain-free scones. They're in a previous scope. Go check it out. Anyway, but this week um, on Tuesday, I'm going to take all my vegetable remnants that you guys have been seeing for like weeks now. I'm going to take all of that and I'm going to make, I'm going to teach you how to make a vegetable stock. So those of you that are vegan that do not have, and you probably already know how to do it, but, um, but those of you that are vegan, um, <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> yes, go, go catch it, please. Stop watching CNN. No, I'm kidding. Watch what you want, but then go watch my scope. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna teach you guys how to 
make a vegetable stock with your leftover vegetables so that nothing, nothing goes to waste in your kitchen. So you can stop stressing about the fact that you've spent all this money on organic vegetables and you're throwing half of it away. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, you're throwing half of it away. Um, so like all the tops and the things that you peel off and all of that. And I'm going to teach you how to use that stuff um, and make an amazing vegetable stock. So hang with me, especially on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> I just love calling people by their parry handles. Well, I, mine's weird too. People are like, go to what? Go, go what? What does your name mean? <laughs> like, that's my website. I'm not changing it either. I, I got that. I got go to kitchens on all social media and I'm not changing it. So <laughs> thank you. No, I did not layer my hair. It's just, I just blow, I just pulled a roll brush through it. It's actually, I did not even wash my hair today because it's been, I've been at home all day and I, I mean, I took a shower and stuff, but I didn't wash it. And so this is kind of just leftover bed head, quite frankly. <laughs> so, so yes, so there you go. But yeah, so come check it out. We're going to, I'm going to teach you some steps on, oh, please. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to thank you. That's sweet. Um, <laughs> I thought it had nothing to do with baking. Dang. <laughs> Please. <laughs> okay, I really have to go make dinner. I don't want to leave because you guys are so fun and I love you, but I have to go make dinner. Yeah, so we're going to be scoping from the kitchen and uh, we're going to just be talking about Thanksgiving. And, and at the end of the week, I'm going to teach you a Thanksgiving tradition a traditional Thanksgiving recipe. I'm going to teach you an alternative for you that is um, that is much more healthy and is still really super delicious. And your family will not even miss this dish if you make it. I promise you. I promise you, they won't even miss this dish. So, um, so we're going to make that on Friday. But on Tuesday, we're going to make vegetable stock. And I, I'm going to have. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have a film crew with me on Tuesday and Wednesday this week. So if you see like a weird camera like behind me or in front of me or whatever, um, it's because there's a film crew and I'll tell you what all that's about at a later date. But yes, so just keeping that in mind, they'll probably stay out of my way, but I'm not sure. I'm, I'm filming for three days next week with a film crew. So pff, it's going to be a long week, but I'm excited about it. So surprises. Yeah, I'll tell you about it when we get a little bit further along in the process. I'll tell you what's happening and what's going on. So, and how you guys can help me <laughs> and what you need to pray about. <laughs> yeah, go feed my man. I know, right? He's pacing. He's like standing over here pacing in the background. So pray that I get fed. <laughs> he just said, go pray that I get fed. <laughs> oh no, not a movie star. Nope. Not me. Nope. Nope. <laughs> Yeah, you you knew me when, right? Me. <laughs> Here he comes. He's coming in the kitchen now. It's getting serious. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, love ya, and I will I will see you uh, tomorrow. Actually, I'll see you tomorrow, twelve p.m. Mountain time tomorrow. I scope every weekday at twelve p.m. Mountain. So, and for those of you that don't know, that's eleven Pacific and two p.m. Eastern. And now I'm out. You guys are gonna have to end your com your conversation as well. Know that I love you, and I only want you to be healthy and happy. And uh, I hope your football team won today. So that's all I have to say. <laughs> all right. Thank you, the digestion doc. <laughs> If you're going to call me Go To Kitchens, I'm calling you the digestion dog. But ex at least everybody knows what yours is. Nobody knows what mine is. Maybe mine should be like Go To Kitchens Girl or something like that. I don't know. Go To Kitchens Chick. Can you say chick anymore? I think if you're a chick, you can say chick. But like a guy can't say chick anymore because it's like, oh my gosh. I don't mind if somebody calls me a chick. That's what I am. I'm a chick. I think chick sounds hot. Demps. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, we have degraded. We are not talking about cooking. Sorry for those of you in the replay that are like, really? These people are crazy because we are. So, all right. Eight of my besties right here on, on scopes. Some dips in the kitchen. <laughs> but there's no numbers in there. I know. <laughs> Private jokes. <laughs> all right. Bye.